Hey everyone, I wanted to cover a question that I was asked in a webinar yesterday, the Fear of Death webinar, which I thought was a very, very good question and one that a lot of people would probably benefit from hearing for hope or an inspiration. And that question was, if I remember correctly, what made you not kill yourself? Because I was extremely suicidal, especially after I left the mental hospital for obvious reasons. I was stuck 24 seven with OCD like most of us. I had severe at the time, severe sensory motor OCD, which every OCD is difficult in its own way. If you haven't had sensory motor, it doesn't really matter. Just felt like you're just being internally tortured all day with your sensations. Then I had really bad panic and anxiety. I had extreme body dysmorphia for about 15 years and everything came to a crashing halt. My father died, then my dog died, then my father died, then my aunt died, then my dog died. So my mother lost her husband, her only sibling and her dog that slept in their bed for 10 years, all within 90 days. I remember I was at my dad's funeral and my, my uh, aunt got out of the car and she was so jaundiced because she suffered with alcoholism that she died and she weighed 56 pounds when she died, which is what, 25 kilos? I mean, it was insane. She in home hospice and everything building up with me being in grad school. And it was just, it, I didn't want to live anymore. It's that simple. I didn't want to live. And there's a couple of things that helped push me through to get to where I am today, which is the recovered state and here to make videos for you guys, st sharing hope. This is a little bit more of a personal story for me. I don't tend to share this particular aspect in great detail too often, but I do think it is important. Before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, and if you need help with one-to-one -one coaching or webinar services, please reach out and we can get you in as soon as possible. We work with all time zones. We have people situated kind of all over the world. So we have access to all different time zones. And I think that is what gives us such a great value when we get people in, you know, as quickly as we, as we can with it within reason, because our schedules are very, very busy. And we do translator calls too, because remember we work with 70 to 90 different countries. So I think, and I'm kind of going to do this in a bullet fashion, almost in an academic sense. The reasons why I didn't kill myself was I was married and I thought that if I could turn into a better husband, not a better person, a better husband, I would benefit by recovering from OCD. I wanted to help my wife and help my family, which includes my two dogs that were just barking the first take of this video. I was literally making this video and then Daisy started barking. So she's over here now laying down when she was just actually barking at me before and I was like, you about to get it, girl. You about to get it. I'm about to take away all your toys, which are like things around the house that she shoes on. Well, not anymore, she used to. So the dogs, another thing was my career that kept me alive. I just I would think to myself, I put in so much hard work going through chiropractic school. I put in so much hard work getting myself through undergraduate school at University of Central Florida that I want to prove to myself that I can go towards these these things, these difficult situations in my life, such as OCD. And then just the hope of living in this time period. Because we live in a, and we live in an amazing time to have OCD. I know many people don't want to highlight that because it's difficult to highlight that. But I wouldn't take OCD in any other time period but now. This is the only time I would want to have OCD in the last five to ten years. Thankfully to Rob and thank you to Albert Ellis and everyone that worked, worked underneath Ellis. And thank you to the Greco-Roman philosophers and everyone that developed different philosophies and unconditional self-life other acceptance to lead to Rob creating what I believe is the only true format of unconditional self-life other acceptance applied to OCD, which brings the only, in my opinion, correct way to recover from OCD, not cure, but recover. And when you recover from OCD, you don't need a cure because you can't tell you of OCD 99.9% .9 of the time. That's by changing your belief systems. So I use those motivating factors to drive me. I used my health. I used my habits. I gave myself daily exercises. I gave myself ways to push things forward. And I used that as a self-motivating perpetual propeller to push me through the murky, muddy water of OCD and anxiety to get myself to a place where I was changing my habits. And I'm talking every single habit you ever could. Something as simple as, you know, not leaving your shoes by the door, right? There's no shoes by our front door or shoes over there. Look at both of them right there. The shoes are away in the closet. By keeping a clean kitchen, by not having any dishes in the sink, by doing all those things. I'm just building my life overall in a way that I would be proud of, self-proud. Not I didn't need other people to be proud of me. It was something that I wanted to do. And I hear people tell me all the time, they say to me, Daisy's about to bark. I'm going to have to go over there and pet her. And people say to me all the time, you know, I have a question for you. What happens if I don't have any of those things? Well, you're going to have to find something. You're going to have to find something to be happy for. Okay? I'm going to come down here with Daisy because she wants me to pet her. 
you know, my dogs were a great example of things that, that drove me to, to not want to end my life. And I wanted to be with my dogs. And I, even I thought if I had OCD suffering 24 seven, that it would still be okay. Uh, if I could just hang out with my dogs for a couple hours, cause I love animals in general, you know, Rob thinks this is good. Give me kisses up here. Hmm. He's the same. Give me kisses up here. No, okay. We don't. Give me kisses. People that don't let their dogs kiss them, you guys are weird. It's okay. You're a weirdo when you know it. So that was one reason that, that I kept myself alive. And I just, I tell people all the time that I'm not going to be able to give you a purpose in this life. No one can. You're going to have to derive that. But the problem is, is so many people are looking. Get pop. Get pop. So many people are looking for purposes that, they want me or Rob or moment to assign to them. And that's never going to happen. You're going to have to find something to work towards. It's never going to be easy. It's not going to look like anything in social media with it tells you, Oh, Oh, you know, uh, if you do this, you'll always be happy. Oh, if you have a relationship, if you have a job, you'll always be, no, this is complete fairy tale bullshit. None of that stuff is real whatsoever. Life is hard work. Most people aren't successful for their own reasons and for luck and market timing. You, just because you put hard, hard work and you're consistent does not mean you're going to be successful. Many people are not successful who have good habits, but to give yourself a better opportunity, you need to work towards something. There's no such thing as universal purpose. There's no such thing. It's easy to break that down. You go throughout different time periods in different cultures. And even now you go to different cultures, maybe in the Middle East compared to say maybe a, a more progressive left leaning area, of maybe San Francisco and the purposes in people's lives are going to be very, very different. There's no right or wrong here. Just what we see and what people do. So you're going to have to assign yourself a purpose for yourself. I'm going to walk upstairs so she stops barking. And then you're going to have to go after those things and realize that it's not always going to be sh rainbows and sunshines and life and sunshine. Life is very hard. There's a lot of difficult things in this world, but I, I had this feeling that and I, and there's no need for me to know if I'm right or I don't care about being right or wrong in that sense. But I had this feeling that if I did that and I pushed myself to work towards something and I gave myself a personal meaning that I would have a better chance of OCD recovery and not wanting to end my life. So I think this is very important. Uh, sorry for my dogs interrupting the video a few times there. I didn't have a lot of time to make this YouTube video, but I did want to come in here and jump in and talk about that. So think about it. If you're in a place right now and you want to end your life, think about some things that maybe you could strive towards. There's no right or wrong here, and that can look different for everyone. But there is hope. You can recover from OCD, and, and best of luck to everyone. But you got to put the hard work in. you got to read the books. you got to push after things, and you have to go out there and get it, and that stuff is really important. And enjoy the rest of your day. Remember, philadosdrecovery.com. Have a good one, everyone.